right, very good. Let's open this meeting. Well, uh, we had a couple guests, but they seem to have moved out for temporarily, so we know it was Steve and John. Let's go to current business. And actually, uh, we're gonna go a little bit out of order here. Jessica, would you like to get up and give us a little information, a little insight to what's happening? Is this guy on? Ooh, yeah. <laughs> it's on, hot mic. Um, so today with us is, this is Sean McCash. He will be the head lifeguard at Metfield Pool this summer. And this is Steely Donna Ho, do I say it right? All right. Um, and she will be the head lifeguard at Kingsdale. And we also have Kelsey Jones who is finishing up a test. So she'll walk in probably here in a minute, but she will be the head um, at the beach. Um, and I just wanted to bring them in today first to kind of put a face to a name. Um, if you see them around, quite, you will see them around at the pools. Um, they've worked for several summers for the Bella Vista POA. And I wanted to talk about real quick, because I, I want you guys to know about this, is that we're doing something this summer called, we're calling it the Water Guardians Campaign. And what, is, what it is, is I had gone to a conference in February, an aquatics conference, and they challenged us, I'll give you the shortened version, they challenged us to do something, look at our goals for the summer and do something that would bring, that could help us work to achieve our goals. And my main goals were one, of course, safety. And my second goal was excellent customer service and how I could bring those together. Um, so my idea, we had to present our idea at the end of the conference, and my idea was to, since we have such a unique community here in Bella Vista, and several different um, amenities that people can use to swim at, um, my idea was to pair with a foundation each amenity, and what, it, what I'm working to achieve is to bring a face to a name for the lifeguards of how important their job is and also to help us. It's, you usually interact with the lifeguard after when they're yelling at you to stop running on the deck or to, you know, the kids are horse playing or after maybe they're a distressed swimmer in the water and you have to get in and get them. Um, and so I want the community to be able to interact with the lifeguards before something like that happens. Um, and I think that'll kind of birth into better customer service or excellent customer service. So luckily, we presented at the end and Bella Vista, Arizona is how they announced us won, our idea won. <laughs> yeah, I was sitting around the room and I'm like, is there a Bella Vista, Arizona? Um, but in, but so, we won and we, I met with these families of these foundations um, and they have been kind enough to let us do this and they have sent us a plethora of awesome stuff. And so you guys will see this year, everything is gonna be the color of the foundation from the lifeguards fanny packs to their, thank you, to wristbands to all different sorts of stuff you'll see is that color. Um, and also, at each facility, there will be a box, a donation box. So if somebody wants to make a donation to the foundation. But we'll be wearing, I'll just get, show you a little bit. So, Collins Hope is the, oh, sorry. Collins Hope Foundation is um, the foundation that will be represented at Kingsdale. So each lifeguard will have a button that says, ask me about Collins Hope. And you can, what's Collins Hope? And we're gonna, and they will be able, through training, to talk about Collins Hope, how they're a national organization that provides over 500,000 free swimming lessons all across the nation. They help other foundations. They bring a lot of water safety education to conferences and to lifeguard training. Um, and that will be, Steely will be there at Kingsdale. 
we have t-shirts and all kinds of stuff. So hopefully we'll play games like on the 4th of July and it's not just like fun stuff. So it'll also be like, we have a ton of these. And so if a kid asks me about Collins Hope and we tell him, he can have one of these. He can have one of these cool things. He can have even, it's got a card on it and it says, you know, I promise to pay more attention in the pool or to not swim in the deep end, you know, if I'm not ready. But it's just really, and, and honestly, hopefully the parents will read it too because parents tend to drop their kids off at the pool sometimes and kind of think like, you know, the lifeguards will watch them. Just make them more aware as well of the dangers. And like I said, we'll all have different, this is, um, and actually, this one is the Dren and Dream Foundation. Sorry, I wish I had a little table here. And they're hot pink, so everything they have will be hot pink. They'll have bandanas and wristbands. Drennan's Dream Foundation. And actually, I'll let Sean, he's uh, been reading about it. I got to meet with him before. You want to talk about it, Sean? Sure. All right. So basically. So basically, Drennan's Dream Foundation uh, goes more into what the parents are thinking, trying to get the parents' awareness up. Um, and so it's more about the parents learning more information about what to do with their kids instead of just dropping them off at the pool. You know, they have more information on safety and the guards and their safety. And so uh, Drennan's Dream Foundation really plays into, you know, the parents and information for them to keep their kids safe um, so yeah that's basically all I want to say yes that'll be at Metfield so yeah their focus like Sean said is more towards um, and it's also towards lifeguards a lot of education you can get on their website they have all kinds of free stuff for the lifeguards um, which we'll do too as part of in-service 15-minute videos on what happens if this happens at the pool and I'm a lifeguard? But, um, and also, and then the final one, Kelsey's not here yet, but I'll just tell you, is Team Kareem, and that'll be at the beach. Um, and their focus is really on servicing families who can't quite afford swimming lessons because they're expensive. And we have a instructor who has donated three free eight-week sessions. Um, that we'll haven't quite figured out how we'll give that away, but um, to do that. So, so really, it, it is a scary thing to, to when I, we're, I'm gonna be training these lifeguards next week on it, so they really know the ins and outs of the foundations, but putting a face, looking at a kid's face who is drowned in these you know, families, but I think they need to be a little scared because I want them to be really aware that 20 minutes of rotation that they're on the stand. And, um, and also, I think it'll make us interact better with the community by being able to talk to people. And in the end, it's a great thing because we're raising money for these foundations. So we'll have at each facility, there'll be a donation thing. And that's why it's like, ask me about. So, and it was funny, Steely was saying um, just earlier, she was like, we, that'd be awesome because a lot of people try to tip us like a lot of regulars are like oh my gosh you guys did great today or thanks for coming up and putting that umbrella up when I didn't even have to ask and they will give you a dollar or they want to tip you and you know no matter how much you tell them no it's okay it's my job and we can put that you know into the jar and at the end um, everybody's going to win because we're all raising money, but there is a very special thing that even they don't know about that's going to happen when they do win. So whoever raises the most money. So, so that's it. And I just, I just wanted to make you guys aware and they were nice enough to come in. Um, Sean and Steely, I just want to say in addition to Jessica, um, they, as Jessica said, they have worked for us um, for, Sean, how many summers will this make? Fourth year. Fourth year. So we've watched these guys progress. These two in particular, well actually Kelsey too, who's not here, they're seniors in high school, so they'll be off to college and hopefully they'll continue to come back for us. So we've groomed them and it's really exciting to see them promoted. And Jess is being very modest in that this is a national aquatics conference. 
she brought forth this idea and out of many ideas, um, her idea was selected. And so we are not the only pools doing this. And then last thing, if you didn't get that, the names of all these foundations are tragic um, family accidents that these people turned into wonderful uh, aquatic safety programs. So, and here's Kelsey. Um, so many of you may know Kelsey from Reardon Hall. Um, she worked for us last year as well. But the three of them are excellent with customer service. So along with Jessica, the pools are going to be rocking it along with the beach this summer. So thanks. Thank you, guys. It's been. So. And I must say I'm partial to the beach just because of the dinosaurs. Yeah, it's so cute. There's going to be, we'll have to do dinosaurs. Thank you. All right, let's move on to our amenity reports. Deb? Um, Brantwood is in great shape. The only thing I would ask is if, because there's still an issue with the hot tub, they, they put it curtain up with the new, the way they, they shape the doors that you can look into the men's locker room. So we don't have So that was our temporary fix, and Jessica and I met with the architect and the construction firm about, what was it, two weeks ago now, Jessica? And they have come up with a more permanent solution, which will require a build out, and they're trying to get us costs, and likely we will move forward with that. Um, there's nothing wrong with that curtain. that. That it has served its purpose, but it is more temporary. Um, it is a, it's not even a curtain. It's a, what it is is like a rolling down shade that was made more for like an outdoor patio kind of thing. Um, and you cannot see into the hot tub, but it does move versus what they've proposed um, is a more permanent structure. Um, it's unfortunate that there's no other solution for that because you have to have the handicap accessibility into the locker room. There's no way to fix it from the locker room side. So, but we're on it. Why can't you just leave the curtain? What's wrong with the curtain? I just had some people say they would, because it's a brand new facility, they would prefer to have more of a permanent fix. That's all. I mean, I, it doesn't make any difference to me, but I just thought I would bring it up. Most of the men I know in there prefer the no curtain. Just leave it open. <laughs> and that's what got us into trouble in the first place. <laughs> I, I have two questions about Branchwood. And we brought one up to Jessica. Racquetball floors, it looks like one end's coming up or so, something. It needs some kind of work on it. Um, I reached out to Tri-State Floors. And um, I think I told you, they're located in Oklahoma. So he is going to come and take a look at it when he comes over. I agree. I think maybe it's, it's peeling. Not yeah, or it's, it's, it wasn't sealed. Yeah, right, just right on the, in the corner there. And also, we just got um, some uh, more specialized cleaning for those floors. So um, they're going to be able to do a deeper clean on those floors. I know they've been going down there and getting the, the marks off, but they're gonna do a deeper clean. The, the second thing in the sauna, we keep having to hit the circuit breaker underneath to turn it on. The reset switch? Yeah. Yeah. What, what they're kind of thinking is, is that, so there was one element working when they went in there to replace, and it has three heating elements. So, Probably it was running on two heating elements, and now that they've replaced all three of them, it's tripping it. So um, we're going to have to look at maybe putting a different breaker in there. Um, but that he knows about that, and after he replaced the heating elements, they're going to come back out and try to figure out a way. I know you, people have been having to hit reset more. And the other problem is a lot of people don't know about the reset button. Yeah, so and I'm on a facility 
They come back an hour later and it's, it never came along and they don't know there's a reset button. Yeah, and I mean, really, we don't even, we, honestly, we really don't even want everybody hitting that reset button. I mean, I understand why now and the problems it had before, but it shouldn't, it should, every once in a while it should, you know, be hit, but not everybody should have to be having to hit it, so. Okay. So we're working on it. All right, thank you. Uh, Ken's not here, so let me pull up his information on his amenity. Of course, you know he has the gun ranges. He's uh, input from Carol. And the current update is business has slowed down some as the result of all recent rain. The fourth trap still under construction. Progress has recently slowed down as a result of, let's see, weather is good, the gun range has been busy. The next group shoot is this Sunday when 60 people will attend. And problems and issues really is that the recent rains have slowed up finishing the fourth trap. I have a question about the gun range. Saturday mornings, what time does the gun range open? Are, are we talking about trap and skeet or rifle pistol? I don't know. Uh, I guess our neighbors, we can hear it early on Saturday, and I just didn't know what time it opened. Someone asked me. Uh, so rifle pistol opens at 8 o'clock. Oh, okay. And, and that's okay. probably what you're hearing. Okay. Those are going to be where okay. the louder okay. firearms are coming okay. from. And that's the earlier of yeah. the okay. two openings. So. Thank you. Chris? Good afternoon, everybody. The RV storage facility is secure. It looks fine. No issues to report. Lake Ann, with all the rain, is looking lush and green and pretty. And it's been under considerable activity. Every time I've been by, there's been lots of boats there or people launching boats, so a uh, good deal there. And London Park, uh, that looks great too. If I were getting picky, what I noticed there is, again, because of all the heavy rains, is that a lot of debris have washed up when the water was high onto the boat launch ramp. So it's just light stuff like um, medium-sized branches and leaves. Um, and the restrooms there are fine. So really everything is in good shape. Thank you. Mary. Mary and Mom are no problems. Um, they're very, very busy with um, banquets for golf and golf events. And one thing that's really picking up is um, they're reserving the hall for weddings. There's a lot of weddings happening on Saturday and Sunday at Reardon. Yeah, it's, it's very, very busy. You know, it's a, and Kathy, she used to work for um, Clinique, so she helps the brides with their makeup and their hair. So um, she's doing a great job. The tennis complex, court one and two, are getting ready to be resurfaced, and they'll be in blue. And on those courts, they're going to have inner lines for it when the youngsters play. They don't play a full court so that they'll be able to use those, um, those courts to learn. And it's interesting because the membership for the tennis complex is down, but the revenue is up because more and more people are just calling and booking their court. So it's kind of a flip-flop this year. Playground looks nice, and uh, that, that's it. I have a, a question yeah. about Reardon. Is there any way that either at Reardon and or the Kingsdale complex can get restriped? on the parking lot. I mean, it's just, the parking lot is, oh, at, at the Kingsdale complex mostly. But you, We are towards golfing issue more than anything. But there's absolutely, you can't see any of the stripes at all. And I guess it's just something, is it on the list to, to be repainted? And Reardon's okay, Reardon's not bad. Yeah, it, it's on the list, uh, the challenge. The reason why it did not make the 19 budget is cost. Okay. Um, okay. It's the largest yeah. parking lot. Yeah. And I think the number was 50,000 just to Jeez. seal and stripe the entire park, yeah, that's why it didn't make the budget. Well, okay, never you mind. You are 100% correct that it needs to be done. Oh, yeah. Uh, wow. But it was just, that was a big number. So we'll try and fit it in the coming year's budget. 
All right, Jan's not here to. Oh, I, oh. I will give a little report for Jan. She just said everything seems to be in order. She fell and screwed her knee up. So hopefully, hopefully she's gonna be okay. Um, but she said, and the, the restrooms were all clean, everything she checked out this week and the grass is growing in the dog park. So she was very pleased. Everything seemed to be in order. Thank you. Okay, uh, Tyree Park, last time I went out there, I didn't see a lot of people, but I saw five trailers and trucks. So it's getting a lot of good use and uh, it's looking good. Uh, everything is uh, in order, everything works, and uh, that's a nice park if you haven't spent any time down there. Uh, Val, RV Park in Blowing Springs. Um, I talked to the lady last week and she said it's starting to fill up and um, they're getting a lot of usage from the bikers tenting and they're putting in a new drinking fountain over by the picnic area and the restrooms were nice and clean and the flowers looked like they were growing by the, in the, uh, what do you call them, planters that by the arboretum. Everything looked good. Bill? Bathrooms are unlocked. Are they? During the during the day. Yeah, so we will follow up on that, but yeah, there's some taken down this morning. Okay, this was as of last week. What time did the rain work? Rick? Uh, right, well, I'm sorry. We're, we're going till 10 o'clock now with the, uh, you know, the, the season is, is getting longer into the evening. And so uh, 10 o'clock and um, if we continue to have some vandalism, we could easily push that to 11, but we're kind of in a wait and see pattern right now. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Horseshoe started, yep. Horseshoes last six weeks. Please make, sure, high, please make sure you use your microphones. All right, Steve. I visited Metfield today. Everything's looking really nice out there. I did uh, do a special check on the restrooms and they looked to be in really good condition. Uh, it's a little bit of standing water maybe in the uh, women's restroom there. Uh, a little bit of moisture in the uh, men's restroom, but they were clean and well stocked and everything uh, looked good other than that. I have something to say about Metfield. Mm -hmm. We had 24 people show up to play pickleball last night mm -hmm. and they were asking about the lights. Do you know any more when they're going to be turned on or sure. available? They're on a cell, 
So they should be going on. But were you there after dark? Um, it was about 8.45. And they weren't on? No. Yeah, they've been repaired. I'll double check. Okay. They should be on a photo cell. And then they also wanted to know um, if there was any way Branchwood could be turned into a pickleball court exclusively. Um, no. <laughs> There's N just Not at this time. Okay. Um, exclusively, no. As you know, we added the lines, and we still have a good mix of people playing, okay. both tennis and pickleball. In the future, when capital budgets would allow, we might consider redoing those as pickleball courts with multiple surfaces, but w weren't, we don't have that money to spend okay. now. All right, thank you. Uh, next current business is the Archery Subcommittee updates. Chris and Debbie, what's happened since the last meeting? Yeah, so just a brief status. Uh, as we know, last month we looked at a use case for the proposed archery range, and a project was taken out to investigate some of the preliminary costs that would be associated with laying that out and getting it going. Uh, subsequent to that, we learned that the original area that we looked at, the Arkmo land, had to be put up for sale. Uh, so it was decided that we probably shouldn't develop that, only to lose the land. Um, we reverted back to a McNelly site as a possibility. Uh, there may be other thoughts that have occurred as well, too. I haven't been made aware of those yet exactly. Uh, we informed uh, the archery, the community archery leaders uh, of the change, stating that the Arkmo land had to be put up for sale. Um, and then, yes, we were still interested in, in pursuing um, a possibility of putting this in, and that a project was underway to look at some of the preliminary costs. So we're hoping to see if there's an update on that costing project. Awesome. We want to go into that, right? Yes. Not the one that's no. Nope. Okay. Um, yeah, we can we can report on what we've got uh, at this point if that's where we want to go. Well, we can do it as it's part of the, the subcommittee too. So yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, John has put together some numbers on for the McNally property. And uh, he has handouts for everyone. And uh, also, we we are taking a closer look at two other properties. Um, one at the state line area next to the animal shelter. And um, another one, which at this point is kind of a um, far off and, and kind of a, uh, it's definitely not a, uh, a sure thing. But there's adjacent property to the uh, trap and skeet range that um, uh, could possibly be used. We don't currently own it, but um, I made a, uh, I wrote a letter to the to the lady that does own it, and uh, she may be interested in in uh, developing it for such activities, especially where uh, the youth are involved. So uh, I'll let John speak to the different locations and, and the costs associated. Yep, so uh, like, like Chris said, uh, kind of going back to the uh, purpose of this project, we wanted to try to figure out low cost options for uh, mostly the McNally site whenever we started looking back at this site. Um, and then we ended up looking at a couple of others. So, this top page here, you can kind of see uh, that is our proposed layout for the McNally site. Um, again, we're using the lowest cost materials that we can possibly get away with at this stage in the game. Uh, barbed wire fencing, for example, gravel roads, gravel parking. The actual archery field as it sits right here, there's no actual enclosure to it. We're, instead, we're gonna enclose the field. Uh, up on this north side of the map, I believe that is north, although we didn't put a compass here, part of the mountain bike trail system is, is over in this area. So we've got a barbed wire fence that kind of disconnects uh, this McNally property from the mountain bike trail. 
that will keep people from entering the property by mistake. They hear people talking uh, this time of year, especially when there's a lot of foliage. You can hear people talking if there are a concentration of people up in that field. Somebody might walk out, catch an arrow. We don't want that to happen. So um, other than that, uh, we've got portable restrooms there. Um, and uh, the, the last line of defense kind of uh, for people coming up the back end of this property here is a six foot tall wooden fence. Uh, and that's mainly just as a arrow catch at 100 yards. So we also, just because, uh, just because we could and because we had that trail there, uh, we wanted to just kind of look at this layout uh, by rerouting the trail, uh, if that is a possibility. The, the people that uh, have installed the trails have been really good uh, about working with us. Uh, so we just wanted to kind of see what that looked like if we did reroute the trail and uh, orient this in a slightly different way. So. Now you're definitely not firing towards, uh, towards the trail at all. Uh, we still get our 100 yards there. Everything's pretty much the same. Uh, the cost with this uh, particular plan is also pretty much the same because we're just moving fences from one place to the other. The, the blue line. Is I'm sorry, the, the blue line there is the rerouted trail. We, we'd bring it back out closer to the road uh, and through this wood line over here uh, and then down through the field and then it would reconnect right there where, where it already is off map. Does everybody kind of get a sense of what we were kind of going for with these two maps? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks good. Okay, so now... Um, I'll uh, go to this third page and I'll just kind of talk about some of the difficulties and the logistics of having this operation at that, uh, at that particular site on McNally Road. Uh, and I think Haas and those guys are aware of this. The Archery Committee was aware of this pretty early on, but the McNally Road site is in the city limits and currently it is zoned for residential. Uh, so that may restrict some of our lower cost options uh, that we want to go with. Uh, we're currently uh, working with a planner to see exactly what we can do with this site, but it's going to be a conversation going forward. Uh, and then, of course, like we've already talked about, the property is located beside a portion of the mountain bike trail system. Uh, we can take several steps to try and alleviate some of those concerns. Uh, the barbed wire fence is one. We'll put up, put up signage to let people know, hey, don't come over this way. We, we're shooting bows. <laughs> um, beyond that, as, as things progress, as this becomes maybe a larger project down the road, of course, we can enclose those sides. But right now, as I was talking about, we are just talking about the lowest cost option. Uh, from a logistics standpoint, the closest location for key checkout is going to be the Metfield Clubhouse. I don't know if you guys know, that's, that's a fairly good piece away from this McNally, McNally Road property, but it's, it's, it's a pretty good piece. Uh, with that, we could either use the Pro Shop, whose uh, hours are pretty much seasonally identical to ours, or we might be able to use the fitness desk uh, uh, that uh, Joan has over there and the Mettville Fitness Facility. Uh, although I know you guys' hours on the weekends are a little different from, from ours. Um, from there, we would keep pricing the same, $4 for a member, $6 for no photo ID, uh, and then uh, $8 for a guest. I would like to uh, at least consider youth and whole team shooting special pricing a lot of these a lot of times uh you know the youth are going to be using it well at least as much as everybody else uh so give them kind of a cost break especially if they show up with their entire team uh let's see what else we got oh and the the last thing this is kind of a uh what i've kind of run into with the uh, gun range uh because we had never had this sort of situation over at the gun range. Uh, so right up front, I'd like to have a practice day. So a 
we could give a coach a key. They would have a specific day off peak hours. They'd come, bring their entire team out at a at some rate that we would negotiate on. And then th all the coaches would set up days. They would have a specific time to bring their team. They practice on that day. That's what we'll do with the team. Everybody good on McNally? Any yes. questions? Yeah, good. Okay. So, uh, oh yeah. So there's a cost. Uh, this is this is a pretty rough estimate of uh, of our costs here. Uh, I would be leery of the road and gravel parking lot figure that I've got down here. Uh, in talking to our construction crews, this is an open field. It's probably going to eat gravel whenever we we start to try to build infrastructure in there. So, uh, I think that's a good estimate, but but it could go slightly higher there. Um, from there, I've got the optional upgrade. You really don't need targets and target stands. People could bring their own, but it would be really nice to have uh, our own on site to uh, kind of let people use. Uh, and then uh, there below, that's just our our annual cost estimates. Portable restrooms, replacing targets every year, gravel maintenance, grounds maintenance, mowing, that sort of thing. John, one of the questions, if we provide targets, that means we're going to have to have some kind of a shed or an outbuilding. So as of right now, the, the way I would propose to do it is, is we just let them sit in the sun. Uh, and my uh, oh, okay. replacement costs okay. Are okay. reflect that year to year. Okay. I know that we'll probably be eating some targets. Of course, they're going to get used. They're going to get sure. shot thousands of times. So we'll probably be replacing targets anyway. Okay. We just don't know how bad the sun is going to beat on this target. Well, and it would prevent having to put a building up. Right. Okay. There's also target stands that you can build that have a little bit of a roof on yeah, them. Yeah. And so that would give us some shade there. But uh, a lot of these ranges just leave their targets out. They, they don't store them unless you had a specific type of target. Yeah, I would imagine too that we have some flexibility here with the group in terms of if we were able to provide materials, they could have uh, volunteer days and they could help take care of and um, erect uh, stands and stuff themselves. I keep moving my coaster. Uh, okay, so uh, our next site here is uh, what we've been referring to as the state line site. Uh, I don't think we have brought this one up before maybe we have uh, the state line site is uh, that little road you would get you would access this by using a little road in between Republic Services and the Bella Vista Animal Shelter um, for many years uh, the Lake Ecology Department took samples back in this area uh, from Little Sugar which is just off map over here um, this site is very large, very spacious, very flat. Uh, you can see that there's a road in here, uh, the portion where I've got parking there. Uh, there's already been heavy equipment in this area, so a lot of this soil has been compacted. The road that exists that's coming into here is in terrible shape, but it could be repaired. It's just been washed out, but uh, some of the problems that I was talking about at McNally where you're building the road in an open field, you don't have that here. Uh, and no mountain bikers to pick off. Say what's that? No <laughs> and no mountain bikers, bikers to pick off. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and John, then, uh, also, when you talk about the road, are you talking about the road that is used by um, Republic as well as the animal shelter? Yes, correct. Okay. Um, well, at least to a certain point. Uh, you can see the animal shelter's uh, employee parking back here. That's about where they, they stop using the road. Yeah. Uh, the next hundred feet there uh, there's a gate that would limit the public from coming back in this area um, other than that the site uh, the layout is largely the same we're using the same materials that we were talking about over at the McNally site uh, really nothing to contain the range itself except for our back fence there at a hundred yeah. yards uh, made out of wood we don't have to use your barbed wire at this uh, site there's really nobody that comes back here uh, from entrance points other than this road uh, so from there the problems with this site is right now this site is owned by Cooper 
we don't own it, uh, but that doesn't mean we can't have a conversation to see if we could use this site. It's not been used. The only thing that uh, this site is currently being used for is the animal shelter walks dogs in this area. Okay. They walk them here, but there's a lot of trails that have been uh, carved out in this north section of woods. It's, it's a very large site. Uh, the, the only portion that we would really need is this kind of field with the cedars here. John, the one question I have on that road, because I called Peter Christie on that road, because the road is horrific getting into the shelter. Right. And they did grade it last week. Um, and I don't, he just said it's not their responsibility. He said that's strictly owned, that road is owned by Cooper. It's not in the city of Bella Vista. So Bella Vista has no responsibility to maintain that road. And so it's just something to bring up because it really is horrific. I don't know. And, the, and those trucks come by. I mean, my God, there's hundreds of them. Right. I know, I know right as you drop off the pavement there yeah. as you're coming off the highway, I know it's in pretty rough shape. I did so, not, I guess I had not thought about the fact that it is owned by Cooper and not by the city. Anyway, okay. that's, that yeah. Yeah, good general direction. You know, obviously we'll have to take, um, have some more subcommittee discussions and stuff once we get the general direction on where we're going with these three sites. Uh, but the main thing about this site is, other than the fact that the animal shelter does use it uh, and the fact that we have Republic uh, Waste right over here to the side, there's largely nothing in the way, no danger to the public. Uh, as long as we do our due diligence, put up signs, make people aware of the activity that's going on. There's nobody supposed to be in this area, un unlike like the mountain bike trails where we know there are people there all the time. So that's the great thing about this site. Oops. So let's talk a little bit about logistics for this site. I've already talked about the, the problems. It is, it's not currently owned by us, it is owned by C Cooper. Uh, it is also zoned residential, so uh, there will also have to be a lengthy conversation with the city uh, about this site as well. Of course, uh, the animal shelter walks their dogs there. The closest location to, to this site is going to be Scottsdale Clubhouse, which is a little out of the way. Again, it's a pretty good piece to travel if you're checking out a key. Pricing uh, would again stay the same. Uh, everything, for the most part, is exactly like the other site. It's just we, it, with this site, we would go to Scottsdale instead of over to Metfield. Everybody good on state line? Thank you. Yeah. Okay, here's our, uh, our last site. I've been calling this. Oh, sure. In the country club because people will be coming down 49 and you could just buzz in here real quickly and then drop it off because I think a lot of people will be going up and down. Yes, uh, and that was the that was another option that I, I I failed to put down. But country club Scottsdale, it depends really which side of the village you're gonna you're coming from. Somebody that lives on the west side would probably want to go to Scottsdale. Somebody from the east side's probably want to going to want to go to the country club so although country club is more central i guess to both i mean we could have keys at both places that that is true uh the problem is whenever you have two sets of keys is it requires some talking back and forth between the two facilities which isn't impossible it's just you you have the possibility of of two people renting out the same key at the same time you know, on that note, maybe there's new electronic locks out there these days that will allow, you know, a new pin each each day or whatever, and an individual pays and gets the pin. So maybe that's an idea. I'm not sure that's it's a current mm -hmm. technology, mm -hmm. but. Not a bad idea. So this uh, last sh last site, do you want to talk about this one or you want me to talk about this one or? Sure. This is our uh, our shot in the dark, if you will. Well, I don't want to call it a shot in the dark. This is our long shot. I have a question about this. The picture, is that the gun range right there? That is the trap and skeet range. Okay. So this site is located 
right beside the Trap and Skeet Range. Uh, if you've ever been on Rocky Del Hollow Road, there is a gate that would take you out into the APAC quarry that's normally locked. Uh, there is a landowner that owns this portion and the portion across the road. Uh, and then on further back, I think there's a different person that owns uh, more of that land and the APAC quarry. So, well, we're seeking, we wrote a letter to this person uh, asking them uh, if we could come to an agreement. lease or a donation uh, of that property um, um, like like I said earlier uh, uh, this person um, is known to look for these kind of things to help communities and and especially youth uh, so um, it's a little bit of a shot in the dark like John said but uh, it, it's not impossible that she would she would go for this so I have, we haven't heard back So our site challenges with this site, uh, really, it's just not owned by us currently. That's a huge factor, but uh, there's a lot of good things about this site. So the closest location to check out a key is Branchwood. It operate exactly like the rifle pistol range. It's close to staff already. Uh, on the weekends, the archers could even pay their fees at the rifle pistol building. Our staff at the rifle pistol range and at the trap and skeet range could keep an eye on the archery range as well. So you'd have a range master that would be on the ground there several days a week and be able to uh, assist people when needed. Uh, of course, with uh, us kind of mimicking the uh, infrastructure for the rifle pistol range and the way we get keys there of course the, the hours would stay the same so there's a lot of great things about this site we just don't have much information about it right now two questions this line down here is that the APAC gate let me get back to my map I'm just trying to reference this yeah. the, the gate is actually almost intersecting r with right uh, where rock yes okay. there you go you got it the cost on this one which you have put together doesn't include the cost of the property or leasing it correct correct okay. i did not include that because we just don't know right now okay. uh, you'll notice as as we go down these sites things do get a little bit cheaper uh, not a whole lot really the the costs are about the same for each of these options as yeah. long as we can go with low cost materials uh, as a matter of fact I just uh, started with square footage for our parking and our, our road and just kind of drag it backwards and just made more parking uh, as uh, room allowed uh, mention how the third site also is county so it doesn't have the city restrictions yes uh, the the third site is in the county it's not in the city so we don't have any of those restrictions that would come with that zoning conversation we can just well we can't do whatever we want but we can largely do whatever we want anybody got any questions Four sites not having all the details and stuff which, which one would you recommend the third option, the, the gun range site, as I've called it, that that would definitely be the best site from a logistics standpoint, uh, just everything all inclusive, that is definitely the best site. If I had to go with a number two, I'd probably go with the state line site, uh, just strictly because we don't have to interfere with the mountain bike trails at all. Okay. Thank you. I wondered if you guys had considered what the uh, new uh, Springdale or Springfield or Springdale uh, announced range is going to do to your usage numbers. Uh, they're opening up in Springdale a new archery range. 
from a Northwest Arkansas perspective, uh, of, of course, it's probably going to drag our numbers down, uh, but we still think we have a lot of archers uh, here in Bella Vista that, that need a place to practice archery. We know that there's a, a team of children at Cooper Elementary uh, that probably, well, I don't want to put words in their mouths, but I know I would not want to drive every practice down to Springdale, go south into Northwest Arkansas when I had a almost as good of option to, you know, practice in my backyard. Yeah, my, my opinion on that is I tried to show numbers the last time we talked that the um, members of, of the POA in Bella Vista would um, fill up a, a good usage rate. Um, and in fact, a, another range in Northwest Arkansas actually could reinforce uh, the sport, you know, the popularity and uh, help help it transcend into more areas. Also, I feel if even with Springdale, that would even be stronger because it's gonna draw maybe more tournaments and the interest. And the Cooper School right now, I don't know if you're all aware, but they've gone to nationals. Those kids have gone to nationals for archery, which is amazing considering their only practice is inside the gym. And um, I know that there's just a huge interest, there really is, in this area for archery. Mm -hmm. So this, this was great information, yeah. thank you very much. And certainly would uh, provoke some more discussion around what's the best choice, the pros and cons and everything. I think what we need to do now is lay out our general direction, right? What, what will the, the POA uh, leadership be able to um, do to support archery? in the near future and in maybe in a longer term um, in respect to all the other um, responsibilities and obligations that we're facing right now. So, uh, and those, are, those do have an impact. Uh, what our thought process was is, uh, I know that there's a lot of people would like to get this done as quickly as possible, but I think that uh, realistically, we're probably looking at first of the year type, uh, kind of a time frame. Here's the, here's the reason, is that uh, first of all, on the third option, which they said that they like the best, we haven't received a response back. Mm -hmm. And so that may take some time to, to grow that alternative, or we may get an answer tomorrow that says no. Uh, the other is uh, the, uh, the zoning. Uh, if we need to modify the zoning in a particular area, that may take time also. So. Um, and for the 19 budget, we don't have anything in here for, even if it's the cheapest of the alternatives, we don't have anything in there. So I, I think that we, we want to be realistic in the time frame that we're probably looking at early 2020 f to make this happen. That's reasonable. And um, do we project this being a part of the budgeting process then um, this year for 2020? Well, we'll definitely, uh, I know that uh, these two gentlemen will fight for it. Uh, ultimately, it's a decision that the board needs to make. Of course. Um, I think we're talking about reasonable numbers. Uh, so we're not talking about a hundred or two hundred thousand dollar project. We're talking about a thirteen, fourteen, fifteen thousand dollar project. So I think that lends itself to um, a higher potential of getting approved. Uh, but we do have uh, the wild card in that uh, we have the fire and uh, uh, how that could, uh, will negatively impact our budget. So I'm really not giving you a good answer other than uh, we'll make sure that it's on the list and we'll request that, uh, but we can't speak for the board. Would it be fair to summarize that uh, we do have a genuine interest in trying to make something happen? Um, and we have to look at the, the financial capabilities and the um, natural assets that allow us to do so. Well, John and, and Rick would not have put this much effort into this report if, if it was not a genuine effort and they would not have sent a letter to a property owner asking for use of land if, unless it was genuine. And I think that uh, of the users, if this is eventually built, I think these two gentlemen may be one of the may be on the frequent flyer list. <laughs> so uh, I think they're motivated, uh, genuinely motivated. But uh, you know, I don't want to speak for the board. That's good news, thanks. 
Hey, John, I have a question. Um, do you foresee that this could um, generate revenue for the POA? I mean, the annual cost, one could see, and it's pretty reasonable. That's six to 800, right? I, I would, uh, I've mentioned this before. I think that we would use the, uh, the beach model. Uh, I don't think, uh, you know, the, the investment in the beach, I don't think the capital investment will ever recoup that. But uh, the sale of sodas and candy bars and ice cream and the rental of kayaks and, and everything, uh, it was enough last year, almost enough, to offset all of the operating costs. So if we can offset the operating costs, I think that would be a, a really nice accomplishment. Uh, so we're looking at 6,800. I think we have a decent shot. Um, uh, you know, it, it's, but it's, you know, we won't know until it's open. Is John right? You know, is, is everybody gonna be going down to Springdale and then we build this place and it's empty? I don't think so, uh, but you know, will we be able to offset the cost? But if we can offset the cost, I think that's a great goal. I have to also say thank you. This is, this is a great report. I mean, it's, at least it's something to carry on our discussions further with a group of people who are. Yeah, we could, we could let the, uh, the community archers, as we like to call them, the community archer leaders, let, a, let them know the status. Yeah. All right, thank you. Good stuff, good stuff. Uh, selecting a volunteer to present at the board meeting because I had to step away from it last month. I'll go ahead and do it this month. Now, into our new business, and it's uh, really the last thing besides the staff reports. Uh, recreation committee members in the term elections. As we know, there are three uh, terms that expire. There's mine, there's Chris's, and there's Bill's. Uh, we'll be voting on this tonight and we'll, um, for the ones that want to remain within the positions that they hold currently. So. And I, I recommend you do three separate motions. Okay. Yeah. Because that's how the board would vote on it also. They would not do it in, in mass, they would do it individually. Mm -hmm. And we have one, um, one member that's decided to retire as well. So that will be an open position for us as well to fill. Okay, so I guess the first thing, Chris, was to find out you want to continue with the Recreation Committee. Yes. Yes, I would absolutely like to continue with the Recreation Committee. Um, I love being involved and I hope to continue contribution. So if folks see it that way, I'd, I'd like to be voted in for the term. Okay. Uh, any questions? Anything? All right. Let's, uh, we need to take a vote. All those in favor of retaining Chris at, at, on the committee, please raise your hand. Opposed? Chris, you're in. <laughs> Thanks, folks. All right. Uh, the second one would be me. I have the ability to have one more term, and uh, I, I enjoy doing this. Besides, I can really give Tom a hard time when I want to. And uh, um, I would very much like to, to do this one more time. So let's take a vote. <laughs> All in favor? All opposed? All right, thank you very much, I appreciate that. Now, for the third uh, position that we have open, Bill is um, stepping down. So we need to go ahead and we need to uh, be active and looking at applications, we also need to uh, have Tammy open up and, uh, and post that, so that we that we have we have the uh, uh, we have the she can, everybody can get the applications from her, and then what we need to do is actively solicit folks that we think we uh, might want to do this and would be a good fit for this group. Yes, Debbie. I would like to thank Bill for all of his effort. And as past president, he's been on seven years, six, six years, years, six years, and has been a, a great,
contributor to this committee. So I would like to say thank you very much for thank your, you. your work yeah. and effort. Thank you. So with that, once again, if there's someone that you know that would be interested in being part of our group here and uh, continuing to move forward with what I think is, um, what I think is the best committee. <laughs> In as much as we, we have a lot of uh, responsibilities, and, there, and there's a lot of different amenities that we cover, and I think we do a good job, and the input that we receive and give to the board and give to Tom uh, has been influential over the years. So get out there and, and try to see what we can drum up, and I don't know when something like that might be able to be put into the newsletter. We'll have it in this week. This week? Okay, very good. I don't know why I'm looking at you. So. <laughs> All right. Um, that is, oh, wait a minute. There's one other thing that uh, I forgot about, and we need to elect a vice chair, because Debbie has stepped from that position and will be effective after this month. It seems like what you've done is you've appointed yourself for the next term. So you have to elect a president and a vice chair, both. Yeah, uh -huh. on the t on the officer positions, norm uh, those are uh, elected in July. Okay. So um, I would hold off, okay. and that will also allow if if you're successful in finding a new member, that member can also vote. Uh, so Perfect. So we we ask that you wait. If the position is is open, uh, then just leave it open until until July. I mean, if it was if if it became open in December, that would be one thing, but. I would leave it open until July. All right, very good. We'll, we'll do this in two months. Yes, Debbie. Also, I, I would like to explain just a little bit as vice chair, I have gone on the board also with the animal shelter. And so, and it's hours and hours of work. And so that is, I mean, I wanna stay here. I wanna continue to work with here, but I feel to divide myself that thinly is, is not appropriate, so that is why I'm backing down from vice chair. Thank you. With that, POA staff reports. Tom? Um, not necessarily related to the Recreation Committee, uh, but I wanted to uh, let everybody know that, first of all, we posted one video regarding the stump dump, and I think a, a large number of people have viewed that video. Um, we're going to record a second one tomorrow and hope to have that out either tomorrow or Wednesday uh, to provide updates. Uh, we're just trying to give as many updates as, as, po as reasonably possible to keep our residents informed as to what's going on. So um, uh, check the, if you go onto the POA's website, go into the uh, member resource section at the top of that page. You'll see uh, Trafalgar Road fire updates, so click on that. Uh, we we uh, updated it uh, early this morning, uh, and we'll probably do some updates in the coming days as we get closer to mobilization. Uh, and as I indicated, we should have a video up there tomorrow or the next day. Would your recommendation, if anybody comes and talks to us, we tell them basically that, go to the video? Yeah, um, Ruth was relaying to me that she was approached by about five people uh, over the weekend and she directed them to the video and then asked them to call her back after she was done with the video, after they were done with the video, and all five said, great, thank you, it answered okay. my question. So um, we, we created all those questions based upon emails that we received from property owners. And we included all the questions, we didn't duck any questions, those were all the questions that we had received. Uh, so I think that it's the first one really takes care or addresses a lot of questions like, why aren't you using the free $20 million? It's not free, you know, uh, those type of things. But uh, uh, it appears to be effective so far. Okay. And uh, we'll see. Um, uh, I have received some emails since we produced the first video with questions. And I've gone back to those people and asked, give me some additional questions. And I've compiled those in my efforts to, to get ready for tomorrow's taping. Um, so 
you know, a lot of the questions are based upon property owner comments and also, you know, uh, questions that, that I had myself in speaking with the contractors that we've hired to put out the fire. I, I guess. Uh, I know that it, it got around quite a bit. Um, uh, I know that people shared it and so forth. I mean, but we don't go on. We'll go on to our Facebook page and post it, but we don't post things onto other pages. But we do encourage residents to do that, to take that information and post it. Uh, but we don't feel it's our position to go on to Positively Bella Vista and post the video. I don't think that's... That, that's not what we should do. But you are more than welcome to do that. We don't have any problem. We know that quite a bit of that was, was done on the, on the first video. Anything else? All right. Um, I've been uh, given a request to, uh, sorry, Rick, to, to, to move Joan up because she's got to go do a class. Thank you. Um, some updates, lots going on, as you can imagine. Um, the beach received some significant damage with the storm. Um, if you go down there today, you'll see that we lost a lot of sand and a retaining wall. Uh, we are mobilizing over the next two weeks because we open a week from Saturday and we will be open on time. We already have the sand ordered and here. We won't place it until next week so that we can uh, make sure any other storms are out of the way. The contractor that's going to be real rebuilding the retaining wall is anticipated to start Wednesday. Some prep work has been done internally to save funds. Uh, so that's all going on. We have a uh, beach party cleanup day on Thursday. My entire team will be out there with rakes and we will be getting rid of a lot of the debris and then we'll have that hauled off. So. Uh, we are all systems go. It looks a little scary when you go down there right now, but we're on top of things. Also, the pool's open on the 25th, and um, if you go by Kingsdale Pool today, the adult pool is not in operation yet. We, uh, this was the year that we were scheduled to replaster. They literally started today. Jessica has lit a fire under our contractors. Unfortunately, they bumped us a couple of times, and weather was not a, a friend to ours but it should be complete, the actual replastering, today or tomorrow, and we will begin to fill and get all our chemicals up. We actually open to Cooper School next Wednesday and do a private party for their graduation, and then we're open to the public on Saturday, both Metfield and a Kingsdale Pool. So lots going on in the next two weeks. Um, heads down and we're jamming, so. Blowing Springs, as Val mentioned, is very, very busy. We not only have all our regular campers and our members who like to RV and, and camp in this time of the year, we also have a number of events that Blowing Springs is rented for, trail users and whatnot. The cabin is, continues to be very popular and uh, gets um, five-star rating ongoing, so we're very happy with that. Um, there is, as always, a little damage in the park with floods, but mostly it's the low water bridge, which unfortunately sits down low, and it's nothing that has stopped the park from continuing to thrive. <coughs> the marina, um, Trey was hired as a marina supervisor. He's been on board for two weeks, and he's already doing a bang-up job. Um, so if you're out by the marina and you want to meet him, um, he is there. We have started the Food to Go program from the marina, and that's in conjunction with the Lake Point. And basically, a member can, a member or guest can order food from Lake Point during the weekdays of uh, Wednesday through Saturday, and Sunday from 11, 10 to 1. And then Lake Point will bring the food down to one of our courtesy slips. Um, we already had a gentleman use it last Sunday, and he raved about it. And the interesting part about it is he's a fairly vocal member of the community and sometimes isn't pleased with all that's going on. And in this case, he was very pleased with both the quality of the food and the service. And we overheard him telling other members what a great idea it was. So we're excited to partner with Lake Point Restaurant on that. As mentioned earlier, Metfield Park 
has had some ban vandalism ongoing in the restroom, so we're being extremely careful. The men's restroom seems to be hit. The rangers are all aware of it. We've stepped up patrol. I called the police, or we called the police this week and asked them to step up patrol. Um, it doesn't seem to be happening in the women's. It's happening in the men's, so we have locked it. It's not open 24-7. We lock it at night um, and unlock it in the morning. Um, in addition to um, the things I talked about at the beach, one of the new things that's happened at the beach that we tried out at Metfield Park last year and it was very successful I in conjunction with the library is a, the, little le the little red library box, which is a lending box. It looks not unlike the food pantries that are in the box, and we just placed one at the beach. So that's in partnership with um, the library, and those are two parks that are very busy with kids. Most of the books, well, I wouldn't even say most, but there's a good portion of the books that are aimed at children, and there's other books that are aimed at adults, and it's one of those things, take a book, leave a book if you want, you don't have to leave a book, and it's regularly stocked by the library, so you'll see that. The other new thing that we're working on with Blowing Springs um, is a riparian area, so the kind of wetland swamp area in the middle of the park if you're behind the RV restrooms and behind the pavilions that's inside the RV site. I've been working for over a year with the natural mat, um, with the master naturalist group. They helped out with the arboretum as well and uh, they have identified a lot of natives. We've cleaned that area out. We're going to be putting a marquee sign up and um, signing that area as an exploration area. There's not going to be a trail through there because this creek goes through there and whatnot, but we're working on that and we're going to get some grant money from the Walton Foundation to help with the sign. I've got some money budgeted, um, but thanks to the master naturalists who Rick has also worked with, um, they are um, doing regular clean out areas in that area and we're going to hang a bat house in that area in the next couple of weeks. So lots going on there just to continue to prove the park. And that's all I have. All right, thank you, John. Rick and John. Basically, so you know what that's about, we're adding another dog pickup station at the beach because while there is one by the pavilion, people like to leave it closer to the beach. So we just thought we would add another one and Rick's team helped with that. All right, I have a, I have a few notes. Is it working? I have a few notes to add and uh, I'll try to be quick. Um, our Lake Rangers are out making their second round of uh, uh, registration compliance checks. Um, we are hiring four new Rangers this spring, so there's a lot gonna be a lot of new faces. It's gonna take some time for them to get properly trained with policy and, and everything, so uh, we, we're gonna be patient with them, but they're already doing quite well and, and uh, we, we think they'll be great additions. And uh, we're, with the vandalism that, that Joan talks about, um, we are going to be, they're going to be more than lake rangers. They're going to be sort of a, a low-key security, not, not a security force, but additional eyes uh, across the POA. Uh, of course, they're not armed or anything, and, and in those kind of situations, the police department is called, but uh, additional eyes will be of benefit. Uh, Rachel Grundle, who is uh, our uh, water quality and fisheries technician, gave her two weeks notice recently, and so we're looking for um, a, a person, uh, a recent college graduate, uh, master's degree would be preferable for that position, so if you know anyone in the, with a scientific mind, please let us know. Um, quickly, a flood damage update. This, 
Stony Kirk parking area received significant damage, but the majority of that has already been repaired. Uh, we do continue to get some woody debris calls from the lakes that are, that are hazards. We're not cleaning up real fine debris, leaf litter and that kind of thing. Uh, that will eventually settle out uh, in the next couple weeks. Um, and that wouldn't be a wise use of manpower to do that. But we are taking care of the bigger hazards that, that might uh, pose a threat to boating. Uh, like Joan said, Avalon Beach has some significant uh, damage and where needed, we'll, we'll help her out with that to get it on track by May 25th. Uh, our golf ponds where we have uh, fish uh, uh, survived the flooding. Uh, we did not get in inundated there, so knock on wood, we're on in, in good shape there. Uh, our spring electrofishing sampling is complete. Uh, we have results from uh, our E. coli testing at the beach from April the 10th, which showed nothing present when our, with our own sampling. We sent off the state sample on uh, May the 1st, and that was confirmed that, that we have no E. coli issues at the beach. <clears throat> and uh, we have a couple of events coming up pretty soon. The Kids Fishing Derby is this Saturday at the large uh, pond behind the Metfield Clubhouse. Uh, we, that's uh, 8 to 12 this weekend for kids ages 3 to 15. The public at large is welcome. We also have uh, the kayak demo days June 2nd um, from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. And I'll let John add a couple of items about the gun range. Um, <clears throat> so over at the gun range, uh, the bad news, for, bad news first, uh, as we already talked about, the uh, fourth trap field is still not open. Uh, we have been watching grass grow, <laughs> as it were. Uh, so the, the rain has given us a pretty big delay. We've been waiting on sod for several weeks to try and uh, kind of control the mud pit. We put down some really nice topsoil, got it all dressed out. We're ready to put down sod and we got a ton of rain in our area so i'm not too sure about the technical aspect of cutting sod but apparently when it is really wet it's very hard to cut you just can't do it whenever your ground's really wet so we've been unable to get sod for several weeks uh, our grounds maintenance crew has switched over to seeding now so as i said we're watching grass grow uh we're and the reason we're watching grass grow is because we just haven't been able to get into, with all that topsoil, naked topsoil, it's really, really muddy. And we've got several pieces of equipment that need to go down into our trap house. They're very heavy. It'll take uh, several people to do. We don't really want to be sinking in the mud and messing up our nice dressed area to do that. Uh, so uh, we are planning on putting the, the brand new machine inside the house this week. Uh, the rest of the structure is in place the electronics are all in place uh, just as soon as we can get that machine in and get it set up get it level we'll be good to go nobody will be able to walk on the ground until we get some grass but we think we might be able to shoot fairly soon um, and the machine is the trap machine yes okay. Uh, okay. it's it's the trap thrower uh, these things have really large carousels they hold about let me do math here uh, they hold about 400 targets if I remember correctly 500 targets uh, it's a very large machine made out of steel and aluminum so and it's all hydraulics and springs and, and that sort of thing not a not a small task to move this thing around uh, so yep we're hoping to get that in really really soon trap should be in the house this week we have recently started opening uh, trap and skeet on Thursdays in addition to Wednesdays and Saturdays. The first day that we did that didn't go over real well. Uh, uh, since then, uh, we've been picking up in business, uh, especially because of the rain. We've had some rainy Wednesdays. People knew they could come out on Thursday. Business has been really picking up. For the first time, Ever that I'm aware of, we have added a state level event at the Trap and Skeet Range. Uh, we are going to host the high school Trap League state championship this year. 
That is going to be on June 15th. We're expecting nearly 150 participants. It will be the single largest event of individual shooters that we have ever had at the Trap and Skeet Range. And it's all thanks to the fourth trap field. So we're pretty excited about that. Uh, but June is going to be extremely busy. We've added two youth events in June, including the, the high school tournament. Everybody is going to be taxed to the max in June. This is probably going to set a sales record for us. I cannot project any way it could not set a sales record for us because these two events we're adding are gonna be huge. Uh, classes last month were, with the exception of our advanced class, they were full, were half full so far. Uh, classes, uh, handgun classes, I'm sorry. So far this month, they're half full. Uh, and more and more calling every day, so I expect those will be uh, probably not quite full, but but very close by the by the time we're ready to go for classes. And I believe that's all I've got. All right, thanks. Uh, point point oh. of clarification, John, on the high school that this trap and skeet state level June fifteenth. What is that called? Is it a just a high school tournament? Yes, well, it's the state, sh I'm trying to remember the exact league name. Let me email it to you. Well, just, yeah, just something because it, for my it's, records. it's fairly that's long, and I don't want to get their okay. name wrong. Okay, that's great. Thank you. Marketing department, Judy? Um, we're, we're good. Not a lot of news. We're busy, as you can imagine, uh, with everything else going on. We're always busy. Um, the summer edition for Inside Magazine is almost ready to go to press, and we'll be out in June. So, we're good. And the e-newsletters, I will say, um, <clears throat> are selling really well. Um, we're doing really well in that market. So, um, if you know of Especially churches or events, you know, it's a great way for them to market their their activity. So, and if uh, who here has seen the Forbes uh, two minute video that was put out, uh, the, interviewing one of our uh, recent residents, uh, last time I checked, there was twelve thousand views on that video, and it cost the POA zero. So we'll see. I think it's one of those things that it, it'll have an impact over time. You know, people see it, then they consider us, and then maybe a year, two years, five years from now, they end up moving here. Good. Uh, anything else? Does anybody have anything to say or present? I know we've gone along the last couple of meetings, so. All right. Uh, the next committee meeting is June 10th, 2019. Do I hear a motion to do to in this meeting? Adjourn? Second? All right, we shall adjourn. Thank you very much, everyone. <laughs>